Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, what you see here is basically two weeks worth of uh, car boot, flea market and uh, charity shop purchases. I've got uh, so much stuff to show you uh, this week that I've had to come up into my studio. I would normally film this sort of thing down in the workshop but I just haven't got the space down there to show you everything all at once. Um, I've got some really interesting stuff over the last two weeks. Today is a bank holiday. Yesterday was Sunday and I wasn't going to go to the uh, boot sale until next week. However I decided to go yesterday because it's some really nice weather uh, and I'm glad I did because there was lots of people there, lots of vendors and as you can see um, I got a load of stuff. Um, I got this, this, uh, this little screwdriver, there's a few bits were last week's purchases. I uh, didn't get a lot last week because there wasn't a great deal to get but um, this week was absolutely brilliant. And I've got quite a load of stuff. So what I think what we'll do is we'll start with some of the uh, the smaller stuff that I picked up from the charity shops. Okay, so here we have the uh, charity shop bits that I got. Um, I got this one on Saturday. A little pink unicorn again for work. I don't know if you guys know, but I have uh, we have some blinds put up in the window at work, and it was very sunny, uh, you know, blinding us as we were working. And of course we wanted to know if we could have um, unicorns on the blinds and the company said no you can't, you'll have to have plain blinds. So right, okay, we'll get our own unicorns in. So here's the second unicorn. Um, if you keep an eye out on my Instagram when I go back to work, um, I shall be uh, putting some video of this one going into work. Uh, this here I picked up yesterday when we were, Mrs Rathbone and I were wandering about. It cost me a pound and it's a little uh, polishing wheel. It looks alright, I haven't tried it yet. You just stick it in a drill and it polishes things up quite nicely. I think I think you can use it for like alloy wheels and what have you. Um, I've yet to try it but it looks alright, not bad for a pound. This little fella was 20p by the way. When I visited the uh, car boot sale a week ago, the other week, um, the weather wasn't all that very good at all so it was very quiet there. There were, weren't so many vendors and people visiting and etc but uh, I managed to get a few things not a great deal at all really um, we'll start with these three here these three I picked up from uh, Mr Silver Van Man and his wife um, what we have here is a uh, I'm not sure what on earth this thing here is I have absolutely no idea I don't think it's ever been used whatever it is it's got an interesting um, point on the front of it we also have a clip round here and it looks like you can put it in a chuck of some description but what it's used for I don't know it just looks interesting so if you guys out there know what it's used for please let me know down below I also got this interesting little screwdriver here I think it's a steadfast screwdriver um, the handles a little bit beat up on it as you can see it's a bit rough and ready got a few chips and cracks in it yeah, steadfast and made in England, Sheffield, England, etc. A few cracks here and there and everywhere. Why did I get this one? Because it's very much a newer version of this old thing here that I have. Now I'm not sure whether this used to belong to my late father or, or what, but I picked it up somewhere uh, about 10 years ago anyway. And uh, as you can see, they're a very similar idea. Large uh, screwdriver bit, uh, short shank and, uh, and a handle on the end of it too. So uh, that's why I picked this little fellow up. And the third item I got was this small King Dick uh, 3 16th Whitworth and 2BA spanner. It's a bit grubby. Um, it's British made. It says uh, chrome vanadium just here on the uh, end of the spanner there. Quite a nice little spanner. Obviously King Dick. I'm going to pick it up because I uh, quite like old English tools. Wandering around what stalls there were there. I came across this 8 inch Irimo adjustable spanner. Uh, this might very well have been a, a government issue at some point or another because we have just here 1993 we have the broad arrow and then we have some other numbers and JG here. Now whether that was the uh, the guy who used the spanner I'm not sure. I say it could very well be a um, government issue. Uh, I do actually have a 6 inch Irimo and this one has the uh, size of it here, 6 inch, Irimo etc. If you turn it over it again has Irimo and 6 inch on it in Spain uh, which is different from this one here so I'm wondering if this is a government issue at some point or another. 
this particular one is uh, more or less seized in the open position. Um, it, it moves a little bit as you can see, but you've got to actually uh, help it to close and it's not all that easy to work either. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on this. Here it goes. But it won't go very well at all. So I'm going to have to uh, take a look into that one. But uh, I do like to pick these uh, Eremos up when I see them. 50p this. I was almost finished uh, wandering around the boot sale or flea market. Uh, I was just about to come home when I came across a lady and she was selling these things on her stall. These are glass insulators um, for electrical work, you know, heavy duty electrical work, high voltage most probably. Uh, don't know much about them, but uh, I thought they were very interesting anyway. As you can see, they are going to need a bit of a good clean up, and then I'll, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with them really. I might hang them in my workshop or even in the conservatory maybe. I'll have to see, but uh, yeah, £2 for those three. Yesterday was very much like today, very hot, around about 30 degrees and there was lots of vendors and lots of people shopping there so uh, I got a lot more stuff yesterday. Okay, moving on to yesterday's tool haul then uh, and what we'll do is we'll start with this Thunderbird 2. Um, this is one of the uh, later made things, I think it's got 2000 on the bottom of it, made in 2000 or at least, you know, started to produce them in 2000 anyway. Um, this is this will be the third Thunderbird 2 that I have ever owned. Um, the first one was back in the 60s, I must have been probably 5, 6, something like that there. And um, I traded a friend of mine at school something for his absolutely, I don't know what toy it was, I traded him a toy for another one, but he, he had an absolutely humongous great big Thunderbird 2, it's gigantic it was. So big that I could hold it by the uh, tail, plane, tail paint plane just here with my hand like that. So it was quite a largish model. Uh, and then after that, some years later, I had a dinky toy, Thunderbird 2, which might have been a bit smaller than this, possibly. But the uh, little pod dropped out of it, as it does on this one. This one's got the little legs underneath as well, like my dinky toy one had. So that you can... Um, you, a dinky toy, when you just push the pod and it came out. This one, you've got a little um, lever at the back here. Just push it and the pod comes away, like so. My original Thunderbird 2, my um, dinky toy one, had a Thunderbird 4 in there. This one, whatever had it had inside, it's gone missing over the years. Um, I think my Thunder, my um, dinky toy one had little buttons you pressed on the sides here to release the legs. But this particular model has little buttons you press on the top, like so. And the little legs pop down. Obviously the uh, pod should be underneath it. There we go. But yep, so there we go, that's the uh, third Thunderbird 2 that I've ever owned. This one has built-in sound effects, but I've got an idea the batteries might very well be a little bit on the flat side. Oh, it's not doing it. You can see what I mean. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong there. Um, in fact, if we was to take a look inside here, so I'm going to say these are going to need replacing. Other than that, my new Thunderbird 2 has really been looked after, I think. Like it. These are the first three tools I purchased. Um, we've got a footprint, duck's foot, uh, a very nice pair of pliers, and this thing here. Uh, when I saw this, I thought, yeah, I'm definitely having this. This thing is uh, 12 and a half inches long. It says on here, number four, world's champion. What we've got on the other side? Fast nut, registered patent number 194041. So whether that's a year, 1940-41, I don't know. I already have a smaller version of one of these things that I bought last year. Here it is, completely dwarfed by uh, my new one. And I say, this thing weighs a fair amount as well. I am very much the uh, fan of old British made tools. Uh, and this thing here is a uh, footprint, it's got the little footprint logo right there. Uh, 2608, now I've tried putting that number into uh, uh, Google, uh, nothing comes up at all, no pictures at all come up of this little fellow here. Uh, Sheffield, made in England. Uh, very nice bit of kit. Uh, this was the first footprint tool I brought 
uh, yesterday. Um, this one is, uh, as you can see, it's a funny shape because it's it's designed for fitting up underneath uh, your basins, and it's for tightening the uh, nut up that holds the tap into place. I can't quite get it because it's quite awkward up there, but you get the idea. I don't know how old this thing is. Um, it might be older than the one I've already got because I have uh, got one that belonged to my late father. This one used to belong to my late father. It's got marples on it, 6552, three quarters of an inch, half inch there, made in England, underneath it as well. So let's take a look at the difference, shall we, guys? There we go. Interesting. So quite a lot heavier, this one. So it might be a lot older. The third item I picked up from that same stall was this very, very nice pair of 8 inch pliers made by Wilkinson's Tools. It says just there, made in England. Um, what we've got here is just a little bit of very light rusting. I think it's had some water running about all over it at some point or another. Uh, as you can see, they work very nicely. The, um, the cutting jaws are in very good shape actually. In fact, so much so they are actually capable of cutting paper. There we go. I'm of the opinion these have hardly been used, to be honest with you. Look very nice indeed. Um, it won't take much to get this rust off of here and we should have underneath that a very nice shiny finish, highly polished finish under there. Um, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with those and these will be going into my toolbox. One of the other stalls I visited had a little tub of cartridges in there, fired cartridges. So I had a rummage through and I came up with uh, half a dozen of these 762 by 39s here. Quite nice little things, quite like those. Uh, 10p each they were. Another stall I came across had um, a couple of boxes of what was basically rubbish I guess, rubbish old nuts and bolts. He had two of these a pound each and in one of the boxes was this here and I thought oh I like that. So I had a word with the guy and uh, oh don't you want to buy the whole box? No I don't want the whole box I just want this. So basically I paid 50p for this instead of a pound for the... I didn't want a box of rubbish to be honest with you. But anyway this thing's interesting. The Penn's Mower Hone. Uh, it's for... You remember the old um, blades you used to get on the uh, lawnmowers? These things here, you know, push my, my late father had a push along lawnmower back in the 60s, shoving it up and down the lawn. And that's what this little fella was for. Again, there's no website, email addresses or anything on this because it's so old. But there's your instructions at the bottom of the uh, box there telling you how to use it. Let's, uh, let's get it out and have a look at it, shall we, guys? The box is a little bit fragile. Uh, I'd love to know how old this is. Uh, quite old, I would imagine. There we go. So this is what it is consists of just a little bit of folded uh, galvanised steel and there's your little uh, honing tool at the bottom there a little, uh, it's a little small like a stone, grinding stone sort of thing um, you can probably see actually that this thing has actually been used a time or two look you can probably see where the blades have uh, chopped into it there but yeah, so somebody's actually used this in the dim and distant past. Mrs Rathbone is very sceptical about stuff like this here but because of the history of it and how old it is I love it. Uh, to get it in its original box from all these years ago I've no idea how old these things are. If you know how old they are please tell me. But um, yeah, so somebody's actually owned this and ha has actually used it in the past. Uh, it's so interesting. I, I love all this sort of stuff so if I see anything like that there it's straight in my bag. Moving around to another vendor, a lady, she had a whole load of stuff set out on the floor including some tools. I can remember my father used to have these back in the day. There's still actually two brand new razor blades in here. Basically what you do is you, um, if I remember correctly, just push the blades out like so from in here. Um, I've got to be careful not to cut myself but there are two of them there. There we go. Two blades not been used at all and you put them in those old fashioned razors like my father used to love using and um, yeah I can remember coming across these as a child many times you put the old ones in the back there they get shoved in the back there and then you throw the whole lot away but yeah cool what a, what a memory so I had that amongst all the tools she had she had this little very cute little three inch Abingdon 
uh, bicycle wrench type thing. Oh, it's great. Look at it, guys. Not bad condition either. Interestingly, this one has the uh, second bulldog mark on it, and this was used after 1885. I have got another one of these things, a four inch one, and that's got the uh, previous mark on it, which is just the bulldog by itself, and that was uh, used between 1881 and 1885. So this little fella here then um, is anywhere from about 1885 onwards. So I'm not, I don't know how, how long they used this mark for, but um, it's quite an old little thing this is. Uh, it's, it says number something here, but the number, whatever it is, is rubbed off there. Uh, moving over the other side, we can see Abingdon, and again, the little bulldog mark again. Might say King Dick or something there, but there's a little bulldog right on the edge there. But isn't this a cute little spanner, guys? It's a wonderful little thing, isn't it? 50 pence, and it still works. It just needs a bit of a cleaning up. Runs quite nicely, actually. So, what a cute little spanner. Love it. Very often, there's a stall run by this old guy, and he doesn't really want much for his tools at all, really. 20 or 30 pence each. Um, I grabbed this lot here, as you can see it here, um, and if I'm not mistaken, this lot only cost me one pound, if I remember correctly, one pound for this lot. Um, amongst this lot I have my uh, second King Dick purchase of the day, so let's take a look at that one. As you can see this is a rather beaten up old King Dick uh, monkey wrench. It still runs to a degree, it's a little bit stiff, it needs a good cleaning up. Um, it was painted black at one time. Interestingly enough, it's been left in the same position, possibly, for decades. But you, see, you see all the accumulated filth and rust here and here, and on the handle. It's, it's not having it just here, look. It's, it's still sort of black, and you can still see the paint under here. Look at it, it's just filthy, but yeah. So it's been left open in that position for decades, possibly. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit beaten up just here, and it doesn't close very well. Um, but, you know, it's a King Dick, so of course I want it for my collection. Next up we have this little Ford branded uh, spanner here. You can see it's got uh, 014, what is that, an A? A 01A17015. It's got Ford in the middle there. And we have TW just there. So this was obviously part of a, uh, a vintage car toolkit way back in the day. What a nice little spanner. I also got this um, Bernard style tool here. This is a bit of a specialist tool. It's got parallel action to it, as you can see. Um, it says just here on the handle, though, it says um, Pyro something or other. Pyro. Pyro. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. Pyro Tenax. Pyro Tenax. Pyro Tenax is what it says on the handle just there. It's also got. Um, Something industries written here, and then over here, made in England, and on the top here, hopefully, we can see that F size. Can we see that? Yeah, F size, we can see on there, and you can see the, um, the action here is uh, very specific for a certain job. No idea what that job was, probably never ever find out unless somebody, somebody out there knows what it was for. Um, yeah, there we are. Probably for some sort of connector, I'd imagine. F-type connector, whatever the hell that might have been back in the day. But uh, it's had a screw replaced here, look, as a lot of these old things do. There's a little brass screw in there. Uh, this sim seems to be intact with its proper screw. But uh, other than that, it doesn't seem too bad at all. Now, obviously, what we have here is a very large tap. I've had to uh, clean it up a little bit around here, somewhere just there. You can't really make it out from the shots in this camera, but I'll put a poster photograph up for you. But I think it says uh, 1 inch BSF uh, 10 TPI high speed steel. And it's got uh, something limited, the company there. Um, this should clean up quite nicely actually. Um, don't know how blunt it is, whether it's been used a lot or whether it's uh, one that's obviously not been used for quite some time, judging by the rust on it, but uh, not in too bad nick, and I think that should clean it very nicely, thank you. Lastly, I've picked up this contemporary um, footprint 9-inch pipe wrench. Uh, unfortunately, it's lost its original pivot pin, and somebody thought it would be a good idea to put a bolt 
with an eye lock nut on the other side of it. Why you put an eye lock nut on there I don't know because it makes it really difficult to get it out. You need a spanner to get it off. Um, it's in pretty good nick, it's a bit filthy, it still works. Uh, as I say, you know, getting these four or five tools for a pound is not bad because I think these currently retail for about 16 to 17 pounds a piece, uh, these modern ones. Um, I have got uh, two other 9 inch ones but they're more vintage than this one. You can quite clearly see how the design has changed over the years. Um, this more modern one has got a wider jaw than these two here, these two older ones. Um, they're all marked as uh, genuine footprints. Even this one's got the footprint just there. I'll have to put a photograph up so you can see that because it's rather grubby. But let's just take a look at the uh, difference in the jaws guys. There's a considerable design change with the later ones, they've got much wider jaws here, where these ones are narrower just here, there's just a solid slug of uh, material in there. Um, you see how they're different. I would say this one doesn't have very much age to it at all, it's just absolutely filthy. There's a little bit of rust on it, but it's absolutely filthy. Uh, these two are the same when I got them, they were just rusty and filthy, but I've cleaned them up as you can see. Uh, but this one is in very good condition, apart from having the pivot pin missing, but um, I can soon get one of those made up next time I'm in the machine shop at work. So that's no biggie there then. Very nice. I'm beginning to get quite a collection of these uh, footprint wrenches. Um, the first time I used one was about 40 odd years ago, and for some reason or another I never got round to getting one. Uh, Till this year, which is a bit strange, isn't it? Because they're actually uh, they're very nice things to use, uh, very good indeed. I think they're better than some of the other wrenches you can get out there. But uh, been around for oh, 100 years or more now. But what I'm going to do is, guys, I'm going to do a uh, specific video on these things if you'd be interested. I've got quite a few of them now, and I wish to do a proper video on them. So keep an eye out for that one. Please let me know if you'd like to see one as well. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this uh, two weeks worth of haul here. I say last week I didn't get a great deal at all, but uh, yesterday it was a beautiful sunny day, out, like, very much like it is today. There were lots of people uh, buying, lots of people vending, very nice indeed. I really enjoyed it. So I'll be going again in about two weeks' time, so keep your eye out, um, see what else I can get hold of. I say this thing's going into work. Uh, keep an eye out on my uh, Instagram page. Uh, when I get into work tomorrow, I'll be posting a video of it along with um, Starly, the other unicorn we got there on the window ledge. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at this lot. Um, if you've got any idea what this little fella was used for, please let me know. Uh, I'd be uh, quite appreciative to find out what it is. No idea, but it just looks interesting. So I picked it up. I'll most likely be doing a, uh, a video on this um, Irimo span here because I want to get it freed up because I want to get it into my toolbox because I like those they're very different they are um, I shall also be cleaning up this um, pair of pliers here because they're uh, they're almost like brand new guys uh, Wilkinson's I don't know how old they would be but uh, yeah hope you enjoyed taking a look at them and uh, thanks for watching I was busy editing this video up when I uh, suddenly remembered I'd purchased this uh, very nice Henry Diston saw there yesterday as well uh, cost me two pounds. I like the handle design on it. I don't know what this is all about, but I like the handle design on it. It's got the little, uh, I think it's Henry Diston in there, is it? Yes, Henry Diston, USA. And of course it's got Henry Diston, or Diston, on the blade as well. And then we have eight points, so I guess that must be eight points per inch possibly, on the uh, teeth there. USA again. All in all, a very super little saw. This one, my late father would have loved to have a look at that.